So this video is going to show you an example of the second derivative test um, in two dimensions. So we've worked out the conditions here. Let me quickly go through them. So the first derivatives of the function must be zero. This combination of second derivatives must be negative. And then finally, the second derivative with respect to x is positive for a minimum or negative for a maximum. Okay. So you could also consider here the second derivative with respect to y. It doesn't matter this third condition. Okay, so I'm just going to do one example because um, as you'll see as we work it out, the calculation is much longer than in the one-dimensional case. So even one example is probably going to take me 10 minutes or so. So let me go through it. So there's a function f of x and y. Okay, and so the first thing we need to do is calculate the first derivatives. So in order to do that, it's a good idea to multiply out first. This is x squared y plus xy squared plus x squared y squared plus xy cubed. Okay. So the derivatives then are df by dx is 2xy plus y squared plus 2xy squared plus y cubed and df by dy is x squared plus 2xy plus 2x squared y plus 3xy squared. Okay, so there are the derivatives. So now we need to find out when are these things equal to zero, right? So in order to do that, it's let's start with the x one. So df by dx is here, so I can take 2x out of these two terms. So I get 2xy plus y squared, and then I get I can take y squared out of these two terms. So then I get, well, okay, let me do that next, y plus y cubed. So you can write this as 2x times y times 1 plus y, and you can write this as y squared times 1 plus y. So you see that that nicely factorizes as y times 2x plus y times 1 plus y. Okay, this y, y, y squared, and y, 2x, 2xy. Okay, so therefore, df by dx equals 0 means that one of these three things equals 0. So either y is equal to 0, so I'll call this one number 1, or y is equal to minus 2x, so I'll call this one number 2, or y is equal to minus 1, so I'll call this one number 3. So these are the conditions on the x derivative being 0. Now we need to look at the y derivative in these three cases. Okay. So number 1. So in number 1, df by dy, if y is 0, 0, 0, 0, this is just equal to x squared. Okay. So in order for this to be equal to 0, you must have x equals 0. So one solution you get then is x equals 0, y equals 0. That's one solution to the equation. Okay. So the second option was this one, y is minus 2x. So then df by dy. If y is minus 2x, then here I get 4, sorry, x squared minus 4x squared minus 4x cubed plus 12x cubed. So this is equal to minus 3x squared plus 8x cubed, which you can write as x squared times 8x minus 3. Okay, so in order for this to be equal to 0, you must have x equals 0 or x equals 3 eighths. Okay. 
So x equals 0 again gives you the point 0, 0, right? Because in this case, y is minus 2x. So that just gives you that one again. x equals 3 eighths gives you the point x is 3 eighths. Sorry. x is 3 eighths. y is minus 2x. So y is minus 3 quarters. So that's another one. And then finally, the case y is equal to minus 1. So if y is equal to minus 1, then df by dy is x squared minus 2x minus 2x squared plus 3x, which is minus x squared plus x, which is minus x, x minus 1. Okay. So in order for that to be equal to 0, you have the x equals 0 or x equals 1. Okay, so x equals 0 gives me the point 0 minus 1. x equals 1 gives me the point 1 minus 1. <coughs> right, so we have worked out the points where the first derivatives are 0, and that gives us a total of four different solutions. Okay, so they are 0, 0, this one, 0 minus 1. And 1 minus 1. Okay, so what we have to do now is check these conditions for each of these points. So this requires calculating the second derivatives of the function f. Okay. Right, so if we do that then we need to calculate d to f by dx squared, d to f by dx dy, d to f by dy squared. Okay. So d2f by dx squared turns out to be 2y plus 2y squared. d2f by dx dy turns out to be 2x plus 2y plus 4xy plus 3y squared d to f by dy squared is 2x plus 2x squared plus 6xy. Okay. So we need to work out what these things are at the different points that we found in the first part. Okay, so the first solution we found was 0, 0. Okay. So here that's dead easy d2f by dx squared is 0, d2f by dx dy is 0, d2f by dy squared is 0. Okay. So unfortunately that means our test doesn't work, right? So this means we don't know if this is a minimum or a maximum. Okay. If it's greater than or less than 0 you can say, but if it's equal to 0 you just don't know. Okay. Now, in fact, you can tell it's not a min or a max. But the second derivative test doesn't tell you that. The way you can work it out is by looking at the function. Okay, so let me do that up here. So the function f, x, and y was x squared y plus x y squared plus x squared y squared that's x, y cubed. Okay. Now if I look at this along the line x equals y, so f, x, x, then I get x cubed plus x cubed plus x to the 4 plus x to the 4. So this is 2x cubed plus x to the 4. And the graph of this function um, for small x, the x cubed terms dominate, and x cubed looks like this. So it goes up in one direction and down in another direction. Okay? So therefore, 0 here cannot be a maximum or a minimum, because in one direction it increases if x and y are positive, and in the other direction it decreases if x and y are negative. Okay? So therefore, we can say it's not a minimum max. Okay. Right, so the next point we found was this one, 3 eighths minus 3 quarters, okay, 
So I worked this out earlier on because the calculation's a bit, you know, annoying. So let me just tell you what the answer is. The second derivative with respect to x is minus 3 eighths. The second derivative dx dy is minus 3 sixteenths. And the second derivative with respect to y is minus 21 over 32. Okay, so what does this tell you? So the first thing that you need to check is the value of d2f by dx dy squared minus d2f by dx squared times d2f by dy squared. Okay, so that's this squared minus this times this. So this turns out to be equal to minus 54 over 256. But the value doesn't matter. All that matters is the fact that this is negative. Okay? And that's what you want because the condition on the second derivative test, if I bring it back here, condition on the second derivative test was that this is negative. And that's true. Okay? So the final condition we have to check is if the second derivative of x is positive, then it's a minimum. And if it's negative, and it's a maximum, and here the second derivative of f is negative. And this tells you that this is a maximum. Okay, so this point is a, a local maximum of the function. Right, so we have to do the same calculation for the remaining points. Let me see if I can fit it on here. So the next point was 0 minus 1. Okay. So this gives you the following values. This turns out to be equal to 0. This turns out to be equal to 1 and this turns out to be equal to 0. So what does this tell you? The condition on the combination of second derivatives is not true. Right? dx squared d2f by dy squared. This is equal to 1, which is not less than 0. Okay? The condition, the requirement was that this should be less than 0, but it's not. It's equal to 1. Okay, so that means that the second derivative fest test fails, and this means that it's not a min or a max. So like the first one, this is not a min or a max. That means in one in some directions it will go up and in the other directions it will go down. Okay, and the final point, 1 minus 1, d2f by dx squared, d2f by dx dy dy squared. So in this case, this is 0, this is minus 1, and this is minus 2. So what does this mean? Again, the condition on the second derivatives is not made. Okay, so this squared minus d to f by dx squared d to f by dy squared. Okay, this is 0, and this is 1 which again is not less than zero, which means that this point is not a min or a max. Okay. So out of the four points where the function is flat, the first derivative is a zero, three of them are not minimums or maximums, and the fourth remaining one, this one, is a maximum. Okay. So you might think that the choice of this function was a bit strange, that three of these points are not mixed minimums or maximums. But in fact, in, in two dimensions, it turns out you're much more likely to get one of these points, where it's neither a minimum or a maximum, than you are to get one where it's a maximum or a minimum. And the reason is there are many different ways for the function to have zero first derivatives in two dimensions. So I, I plotted some functions on the computer here just to talk about them. So these are four functions where there is a point where the first derivatives are zero, right? Here, at the bottom down here, in the middle here, 
and at the point here as well. So the first two are your standard, this is a maximum, this is a minimum, okay, so no surprises there. But most common in two dimensions is what's known as a saddle point. So a saddle point is where in some directions it will go up like this, and in other directions it will go down like that. So this is neither a maximum or a minimum, and it's called a saddle point. Okay. And here's another example of a saddle point. So because in two dimensions the condition on the maximum is quite strict, right? It has to be a maximum in every direction you go. Whereas much more likely is that in some directions it goes up and in other directions it goes down, and that gives you a saddle point. Okay. Um, so that was, as I said, an example of the second derivative test, and it did indeed take about 15 minutes. So if this comes up on the mini-test, you're likely only to have to do one question like this, but hopefully the method is clear.